is delivered that we can uh, sorry yeah minimize this floating one mm -hmm. that's how it's gone all right uh, welcome back for the uh, session five of the uh, fdp um, so far we discussed about uh, uh, on day one we discussed about data data energy tools like google data studio and on day two we were we have seen how to work on a natural language uh, uh, processing uh, machine learning model building and also testing with that and uh, also uh, to productionize that um, how we use a flask server and then um, and then on day three um, uh, day four yeah yesterday we have seen various services that are available in the google cloud platform and we also try to uh, work on a use case where um, we created a hadoop cluster with uh, uh, two uh, um, name uh, two worker nodes and one master node and then uh, we try to create a database using uh, cloud sql um, and then we uh, we try to predict the um, the ratings which are going to be given by the users um, so using uh, using a spark ml job and today as i uh, promised you um, today i'm going to show you uh, two cases one um, a image classifier uh, using the convolution neural network uh, where we take a set of uh, uh, two types of images and we train our model um, and then we will give few samples to that model and see how it is performing and the second thing is the similar kind of model but but uh, different images altogether different category without writing a single line of code how to build a model using AutoML. both these both are computer vision problem statements um, and uh, obviously we need to uh, use images so image processing techniques a couple of techniques are used in that and to give a background about uh, uh, images that we are going to use in the first uh, use case i'm taking a very pretty, pretty simple example but i'm assuming that a couple of a couple of the audience are also uh, for the first time they might be implementing it so we are taking set of uh, 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 cats and dogs images and then we are going to build a model and then um, we'll see how this model accuracy is and how it is performing on the uh, overall trend if you recall our nlp uh, statement nlp uh, model we have used a sequential model there where you have multiple layers in your deep, deep neural network and then um, we have trained in a similar way here also we will use uh, CNN convolution neural network where um, we will have multiple layers of convolution 2Ds and max poolings, and then we will flatten the uh, vector, flatten the uh, vector uh, vector of images, um, and then we will try the more uh, we will compile the uh, compile the model, then fit uh, uh, means uh, try the model and see the predictions. And in the second example. We are going to take uh, 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 auto ML, auto ML uh, internal data, data set, which is already available. Um, there you have a lot of uh, uh, cloud features, different different cloud features. Um, those features are given to your auto ML, and your auto ML will try to train them and segregate. One, um, uh, all these things uh, we are using to use, we are going to use uh, Google Cloud Platform tools. First one, first one we are going to develop in uh, Google Colab. Second one using AutoML in the which is a which is a manage completely managed service uh, cloud ML service by Google Cloud. Okay, let's get into this. Um, first, I will uh, opt like this. First, I will go with the uh, coding part. Uh, for the first example, so that you can and uh, you can enjoy how easily it can be done in uh, within a few clicks. Okay. Yeah. Here, if you see uh, again, I have I'm back to our uh, Google Colab. 
um, where you can have your text and also the code code blocks. Um, first, first try to understand your data set as we have done in the case of LP uh, problem, problem statement also. So here we are taking the examples of cats and dogs. Um, we have taken, this is this is actually in the uh, Kaggle also. Kaggle, in Kaggle we have much more bigger database, but we are not taking that complete database. We are taking only 2000 images because if I train all 25,000 images, it takes a lot of time. Of course, now also for 2000 images, it takes very decent uh, uh, time, uh, very good time for uh, getting an accuracy of close to between 70 to 80. So the more the uh, data set you have, training data set, um, and then with the different uh, uh, number of uh, convolution, convolution layers and mag pooling layers, if you try to uh, play around them by increasing the number of uh, uh, layers, then your accuracy really increases. So that you have to experiment uh, once you go through the complete concept. Um, then uh, we will train them uh, with a, a different time different and then uh, we will also validate that. so as i told you this is what now first we need to get the uh, images to our uh, local temporary uh, temporary uh, temporary folder environment for that we need to use w get that fits the i think uh, yeah Still connecting the runtime is runtime. All right, uh, the images are in now is it folder. You can see uh, cats, dogs, filter.zip. Now I, I need to extract them. Am I audible now, um, Siraj? Sir, voice is clear, but little low, sir. Uh, if you speak a little bit loud, then it will be very fine. Um, let me uh, change my uh, mic position then one second how about now uh, yeah a little bit improved sir only a little bit okay okay now and now it's okay sir okay um okay i have moved this camera close to me uh okay, fine so i'm keeping like this okay is it fine now Still low, sir. Still low. Just a second. Check it now. Uh, still low. Uh, How come the same setup like yesterday? Can you check now? I just adjusted the volume. Yes, sir. Now it is very fine, sir. Please carry on. Okay. Um, let me know. I mean, by, uh, like uh, just now you prompted the like that. Uh, uh, so that I'll try to adjust it again. Okay. Okay. Now, um, once you have the uh, downloaded the uh, zip file with the your images and all, then you need to extract them and uh, save in the local uh, local copy in a folder type. So for that, you need to import uh, uh, these these two, and then uh, uh, give the path of your uh, zip file. So zip file extractor is there, which is an inbuilt one. So that actually ex do this do this part for you. Okay. So all my uh, images are now uh, extracted to uh, slash tmp. TMP. Um, if you would like to mount these files in your uh, uh, Google Drive or cloud storage, you can do that. And uh, um, again, when uh, once you mount the 
drive uh, into your collab then um, it works like it like it works like your local folder again which we have shown uh, seen in the uh, case of uh, uh, our uh, uh, second um, second session okay um then let's move further now um just try to uh, observe this carefully so the base directory is this cats and dogs filtered folder and then train we are creating one training directory and one validation directory and also training the uh, training directory for the cats and dogs so imagine you have uh, this folder under that another two folders one is a training directory and another one is a validation directory again under the training directory you have a cats directory dogs directory again under validation directory you have cats directory and uh, dogs directory it looks like uh, if you see um, this is like a pmp and then under that cats and dogs again under that you have train under that cats dogs again valley well date under that again cats dogs so this is the diet structure at this point of time okay so and i we are joining the path and see cats and dogs and cats and dogs okay so all those dietary paths are here now in this respective variables now let's see uh, how these files are inside these folders so we are taking first 20 for that colon 20 you are printing it now so these are different images of cats and dogs let's see the total number of uh, images in folders so training cats images thousand again dogs thousand and again validation images 500 and again dogs 500 so when you are training the model you have to make sure that you have to separate completely have your uh, um, training set and also validation set so that once you train your model with the training data set then you will get a chance to validate the validate with your validation set it's very important to have a very good strategy on how to divide your training and uh, validation sets generally if you have as a last time also we discussed this point generally if you have let's say one lakh records or one lakh uh, thousand images let's say one lakh records then where to have 50 percent of the training and then uh, 30 percent to test and again next uh, another uh, uh, 20 percent to revalidate so unseen data should be given to evaluate at the end now i'm trying to show you a couple of pictures using matlib plotting so for that you have to import these things plot and mg mp image libraries and class here then uh, yeah we are trying to show eight uh, pictures of each um, so this is this is not not a big thing you can actually search anywhere you can get that so you don't need to buy hard all these things the only thing is you need to understand uh, the procedure that's it so this code is available everywhere the procedure if you understand uh, then step by step you can actually bring them so these are the different pictures which we are now trying to create a model for so i try to show it now actually when we train this was accuracy is close to 70 percent um, now here we are going to take images images of size uh, of different
prints from England. Okay, and um, you, and and those images you need to rearrange. So for that there is a procedure which I'm going to show you now. So as as last time we are going to use the sequential model. For that, let's have a look at these things first before we understand the model. The uh, convolution, um, I, I'm, I'm assuming that most of you know the uh, uh, few concepts around the images. Every color, color, color image has three layers, RGB layers. And then what we are going to use is a convolution neural network. Uh, convolution, so yeah, happens in this way. If I give an image, if you um, if you know about the filter filter matrix of size three by three, seven by seven, five by five, one by one, and then this feature is extracted and created the uh, created a um, small pixel over here. It's not a single pixel, of course, and then max pooling is done as a next step, and this these two steps are repeated again again, so that you will get the better feature extraction. And once the extraction is over, then train the to train the model, you have to flatten your pixels in a, into a metric format, vector format. Then that is that is passed to your connected uh, connected, connected network, and you apply a softmax because you, here it is a classifier between one zero one. So you, you have only two type of images over here. One is cat, uh, and another one is do dog. So this this convolution. And again, max pooling, convolution max pooling happens so that you are you extract the right features from the each and every image. Okay, for example, if you if you extract the uh, some part of a car and then that is actually uh, moving to a, uh, a matrix and then that conversion happens there and then max pooling 2D happens over there. So we will see one by one slowly. Now you have uh, three images. Um, I'll show you other image. Which will give you more understanding of that. Yeah. If you see, this is what a filter is. Filter applies on each and every uh, metric within the image. Okay. I'm taking one green uh, in RGB. One one dimension we have taken. And when I'm applying three by three filter, um, this applies, and then your features are extracted and summed up like this. And again, on this, you will apply your max pooling so that a two by two will two by two will come out. So, like that, every feature is extracted, and it, will, it identifies that very clearly. All these things we are going to show you in the code, right? Yeah. Take three layers, like one is red, green, and then blue. These are the paddings, extra paddings which required. So when so we are uh, having zeros over there. Let's see uh, see that. And your three by three uh, filter, which is auto generated, will be applied on each and every layer. And then those three will be mapped. Just imagine a three by a three D three D kind of picture where you have one layer uh, with uh, with uh, with a rectangular box with numbers and all. Uh, that is pixels values. Um, yeah, you know the values between the values of uh, pixels will be between zero to uh, two fifty five. Um, so in the, in this process of flattening, also we will apply the normalization on each and every pixel value by dividing with uh, two fifty five. So that anyways we're gonna show. So this is how what happens when you ap apply uh, convolution two D with the filter and then max pooling, uh, a max pooling mechanism. So. You, do you remember? I mean, I hope you remember activation relu is used for the computationally high uh, functions uh, operations. Um, There's a reason we are using U relu here. Look at this now. I'm asking to create a three by three filter, sixteen filters, and then apply on the image of size one fifty by one fifty. Okay. One second. Um, yeah, here. 150 by 150 with RGB as three layers. In case if you are using black and gray color pictures, then this will be one because you have only one color. 
okay gray scale and immediately i'm using i'm i'm applying my convol max pooling of 2d layer like that the number of layers convolution max pooling layers you can play with play around okay after that you have to apply the you have to flatten the result so that it will go into your deep neural network even in the deep neural network also you can create neurons of your different sizes you can also add multiple layers if you want okay so that your accuracy might be improved and you can take more number of let's say uh, 10 24 uh, uh, neurons also but uh, for for uh, uh, because if i increase the number of neurons and number of layers the training process takes lot of time so anyways compute engine is not going to charge you so you can you can actually um, uh, take a complex network and then train the train the model to improve the efficiency of the your model okay so only you have used uh, you, you you you'll use activation as sigmoid so that you get a classifier and finally this one is one neuron you just need because the output is a classifier so either it is a dog or a cat that's it okay so when to achieve the better accuracy the time taking process only is only this rest all code is one time once you see that then it's 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 over um, same thing actually you can you can apply for any kind of images but the only thing is here if you if you play around with the number of neurons and number of layers then your your efficiency of uh, efficiency of the model keeps going up so this is the model summary it also almost like 1 million uh, para parameters are there and by we are using the uh, binary cross entropy and you can also use in instead of rms prop you can go for adam adagard any any kind of uh, optimizers you can also try with that so that you can see um, a improvement in the overall model now we are see here we are normalizing with the help of image generator image generator is inbuilt in uh, keras for the processing the images it re rescales the all the images um, uh, to your uh, required sizes and we are normalizing with this process see for every every pixel will be divided by uh, 255 value and the float float value will be rounded off <coughs> okay so like that you are taking the uh, train directory and also validation directory of your cats and dogs yes. that is over then you can go ahead and train the model with this time i'm using 15 epochs um this takes longer time obviously um but because uh, the, the cnn models required uh, number of epochs so that you can get much more, much more good Uh, accuracy so for that you need to wait and you step i'm taking 100 images the training started now this take couple of seconds couple of minute not seconds the accuracy is only 0.62 in the first round of training for the validation and this is for the training set is much much more less so imagine that each each um, feature of your cat, uh, cat and dog is extracted and then um, uh, uh, convolution and max pooling is applied 
and then flattened uh, that uh, that uh, images and again uh, that vector is flattened and it descends to a dense layer and then dense layer again you apply uh, relu on that and then you finally you end up with a, a soft uh, sigmoid activation function with the zero and one so that step uh, that step for every image happens in epoch so all the images go through the entire cycle in each training process so see how much computation it needs so that kind of computation better to use in uh, colab so that you don't uh, need much more bigger resources at your computer and uh, anyways uh, attached resources will be there for this so absolutely they are free it will be trained and once you once you are fine with the model and then uh, last time i have shown you model dot save and also you can apply the um, uh, call back so that if when you are uh, training the model with a number of epochs let's say 20 epochs or 30 epochs um, the better model will be is given uh, thrown back to the uh, history and then you can save that model as specific and then use anywhere you can use that model anywhere so the, the sequence of steps are more so like this there are so many algorithms so many ways of uh, doing uh, your uh, vision processing uh, problems and uh, uh, nlp problems and speed problems so um, you cannot touch each and everything in a single go but uh, better thing is you pick up one area and uh, try to solve three four use cases and try to work around those algorithms and uh, while creating the model uh, try experimenting with uh, uh, experimenting with the different layers different number of neurons so you have to have a lot of patience obviously end of the day um, you cannot we, we cannot learn everything in one day or one week or one month so it's a continuous press process I, I have shown you um, there are so many data data sets are available uh, not only in uh, uh, not only in your google uh, cloud of course then aws is also uh, you create a free account for one year you can enjoy the free service with 300 dollars and that's more than enough to practice. Um, then pick up the data from your source, um, real-time scenario, and then apply uh, different algorithms on that uh, and see. So to pick up one area first and try to master that because most of the uh, flow is same um, everywhere in any area. So once you master one area, then you can jump into the second area like that. slowly the accuracy is increasing if you see for the epoch 4 so the better the training better the uh, understanding obviously like uh, um, uh, neuron network uh, you can actually it is motivated by the human uh, human kind of intelligence so uh, the more you train the more you the uh, the more the the neuron the network learns so based based on that you can actually see this you imagine that The next part is nothing. I'm trying to upload a few one two images. Once my try model is ready, uh, for that uh, upload you have a file dot files dot upload function. Then upload the one or two images and give it to the model so that the model will predict model dot predict. So it is very see a um, lot of functions are already inbuilt and then it's very easy to implement all these things. Only thing funda is to understand the mathematical part of it and uh, the algorithm part of it. How did it, how how it is there, how it is working inside, and read many articles, textbooks. So to get the complete understanding on that, try to see the mathematical equations. So how the, this probability works, the derivatives works, um, how closely, how you were uh, cosine um, similarities, and these things work. So that um, you, you can understand the internal part of it, what is exactly happening inside, the, uh, inside this.
my training accuracy is going growing whereas the validation accuracy down from 0.72 to 0.71 Maybe in the next epoch or next cycle of training, it may pick up. I think hardly next two, one, two minutes, it should be over. The entire process of this classification in AutoML, just a few clicks, that's it. So it won't take much time. But there also, uh, we will we need to uh, end up there with the training process because the uh, training will take a couple of hours inside the uh, AutoML. Uh, but once the training is over with the best model, he will email you um, once you have, if you have an account so that once you open, then, then you can try, you can test and evaluate the model uh, with the sample images or the real time images. There, what kind of filter need to choose uh, or what kind of, uh, how many uh, max pooling layers need to be applied um and uh, uh, how many convolution max pooling combinations need to be applied how many dense layers are applied there you don't know anything everything he will take he will apply inside and try to give the best model out of best model best trained model to you For that, as a first step, you need to enable the uh, API service of the Cloud ML. It's already enabled in this case. For the demonstration purpose, I have already uploaded a couple of uh, images over there. So in this example, anyways, we, we, uh, meanwhile, while it is getting trained, I will explain the use case here. Here, we are taking uh, three kinds of, uh, uh, three types of uh, sky pictures, and they are technically, uh, it seems they have names also for that. One is Cyrus, uh, Cirrus, and then uh, the second one is, I don't know how to pronounce this, cumulus. And then second is, and third one is cumulonimbus. cumulonimbus. So there are three types of uh, uh, sky pictures are there. And uh, we have taken 60 images, 20 each, uh, for type 1 and then type 2 and type 3. So these three types are there. So internally, once you upload those images, I'll, I'll show you how to upload images and all. Don't worry. Um, once you upload the images and all, the um, AutoML uh, Vision API internally divide them into training and validation test uh, sets. Out of 20, it took 16 as a train and then two validation, then two as test. You can upload many images, but the training takes more, more, more time. Um, generally, when you want to uh, really work on a use case uh, to apply in the real time, so what he says is minimum number of pictures could be better, better, better to have between 100 and 500. So uh, it's, uh, of course, you also need to have data set, right? 
you can you can imagine this kind of uh, uh, application in somewhere like uh, uh, damaged part of a car or a scooter so you can um, gather damaged uh, parts and non damaged parts so based on that you can actually uh, upload those pictures if you have collection if you have and then classify them this is the damaged one this is not a damaged one so immediately when um, uh, in incident companies in, in uh, something like uh, incident companies and all without any uh, further in inspection once you apply if you give the uh, some kind of uh, mobile application to your customer then you can actually uh, ask him to take a picture of your damage so you can understand how uh, how how the damage is so while planning also you need to mention that uh, what the type may is to this model people who are very much interested to start this uh, career in uh, machine learning or to practice as i told you last time uh, most of you are faculty if you to start from your research uh, better places uh, participating in the uh, kaggle competitions so uh, there are so many uh, i think most of you know kaggle anyways for the people who are listening for the first time just here you have a number of uh, data sets and competitions going on you can pick up the one which you whichever you want like let's say um yeah linear regression samples if you want or the challenges based on that you can pick up one one thing and then start working on that and you will see lot of uh, 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 lot 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 many ways of uh, solving that problem so pick up the one which one which which whichever, whichever you find like uh, start working with and then move forward so that's a better way to learn quicker and then to the specific to the point so uh, this site helps a lot seriously so this accuracy ended up with the uh, uh, 0.72 and uh, my training accuracy though my training accuracy is 0.9 in predicting it with the testing uh, testing data set it only ended up with 0.72 so that means like uh, for every 100 only 70 70 times or 100 times the prediction is perfect i don't say it's a wonderful model but you need to uh as i told you you need to increase the uh, modify the dense layers and all with the number of neurons so i'll try to upload one image i have downloaded a couple of images let's upload one dog picture and see how okay so your model predicted this as dog dog only you can see this here uh, i have uploaded a, a dog uh, image with the uh, 4600 some bytes and then uh, it it saved in the temp folder and then it is it is predicting that as dog only so model dot predict if you i uh, have shown you that so the image is been again um size to 150 and 150 and then uploaded but i did I, i used only one image so no worry about the batch size let me try with one more cat image and see how it works this time it work well now next time we'll see oh again this is the wrong prediction so cat one image it is predicting as dog so as i told you the model is only 72% accurate so uh, we again when you see this kind of image testing results again you have to go back to your model and retry it changing the uh, your little, little, little bit then 
again apply and test so this process takes time and also this is the only bear you need to focus more yeah dog is again created as dog i have one more cat but this cat is not clear with the lot of uh, images and all see now this this cat is also created as dog so this means you need to go back to your training um, set of your cats and see how exactly the cats are there or uh, else else you need to add more images to your cats repository and retrain the entire model so um, training the model and then predicting and then testing this is the this is the major part so unless until you are sure about okay this model work perfect then this entire process you need to do again and again so this is a visualization code you don't need to worry about this much so uh, till this part creating the model and then validating it okay now all these steps let's see how it happens in auto ml as i told you we don't need to code here um, just it's a process that's it just try to understand the process this is again image classifier problem um pre built ml models how this will be applied on the cloud uh, auto ml we'll see so first i try to understand this uh, auto ml vision provide uh, provides an interface for all the steps in training and image classification model and uh, uh, generating predictions on it um let's start with that we are enabling the api so which which we have already done and then um enable the and go to uh, uh, yeah uh, go to if you, if you don't if you, if you are doing the first first time you saying to enable which we have already done now um let's go back to our uh, ui there and then start the cloud shell because i am storing all the images in uh, cloud storage area and from there we will move them to our auto ml uh, ui it picks up of course from there we'll see step by step and when you go back to your college encourage your students also to do uh participate participate in kaggle competitions and also uh, host their uh, if they if they do some kind of projects and all ask them to use github so that that gives the global uh, visibility for them
it seems uh, Klausch has a weekly usage limits. With these limits, you will need to wait before you can use Klausch again. Your quota resets on June 30th. Very bad news. I think 50 hours uh, in the free free uh, mode is giving it seems. It's the first time I encountered, encountered in a week. Okay. I think uh, I don't get any cloud shell here. Mm, I need to skip that part. Let's see if I wear on the other way. Then how to pick up the images? Necessarily, I removed the pictures also last night. All right. See, um, what I have done, I'll tell you. Um, I have created one bucket in the in our storage. Yesterday, we have discussed how to create a bucket. Um, in the bucket, um, the three types of clouds uh, are copied into three folders. Folder one, type two, type three. So for that, um, yesterday we have seen these commands. We have created a new bucket like this. If you can, if you recall, mb is the command for the make bucket um, using gsutil, Google Storage Util, which is a uh, Python utility. Um, and uh, this is your environmental variable. If you recall, uh, yesterday DevShellNet project ID we have used. And today, what I have done is we have I have loaded uh, into this into this variable. Nothing much, okay. Or else you can directly use this also here, okay. Um, then I have navigated to uh, this one. I'll show you that also. There's nothing but I think we have opened it. Okay, so I have created a new data set. You need to click on this new data set. Then you need to give a title over here. Okay, and then a single label classification and then create data set. So with that, wait. With that, this data set will be created. Now, after doing that, while I need to import the images into CSV format. That is the only one step is extra. So imagine that in your browse, in your bucket, you have three folders in that. Again, three types of images, 20 to 20 images each are uploaded. Okay, For, uh, those are extracted again. Um, they're again publicly available. I'll show you the command for that. GS auto ML code lab clouds in this you have the repository of the images those images are been copied to your local bucket folder wise okay so if you run this command in the cloud shell by default those things will come and save or uh, will be downloaded in your newly created bucket okay so this step we have yesterday also we have seen when you are extracting the uh, your data set. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Screen is not visible, sir. Screen is not visible. Okay. It is shared. It's in the shared mode only. Yeah, now it is okay, sir. Where did you where did you lost? Just now, sir. Just now. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll repeat the last statement. Um, the cloud images are available publicly in this bucket. So from that bucket to our newly created bucket.
first appeal say all my uh, images and their locations locations into a csv file okay that that is achieved with this command nothing but you just need to copy this and then paste in the uh, cloud shell that's it okay here this one is your bucket name okay we are using the a variable here instead of that you can directly type the complete name of the bucket also but not a problem okay after that i will show you one, how uh, that uh, data dot csv is there So that command after running in the cloud shell, saves the image like this, okay? The location of each and every image in the project with the project ID, okay? All the 60 images. So for that, you just need to run this command okay now after that i'm doing that upload this image to your bucket yeah again that csv is moved to bucket now uh, that is not required anyways we are directly moving to that uh, auto ml part then navigate to this part there after uploading all those things then import the images from storage to um, the cloud ml auto data set for how to do that so now at this point of time you have a bucket under that you have three folders and one csv file with all the images urls and locations and type of that image okay in the two rows so assuming that i will select the csv you know how to come to this point right first Cloud ML API enable step one and step two is directly come to vision data sets, then create a new data set. Click on the create new data set. I gave the data set name as clouds new and then I click on the import button so that I came here. So once my data is there in, uh, uh, in my bucket, select this ESV format. drag it down here if you see gs google storage link it is asking for the csv file so browse and then click here here you will have your uh, csv file okay as we did not move the files over there it is not appearing right once that is done then you can click on the continue then immediately the images will be loaded here got it so how to get those images here this is the procedure okay simple procedure four or five steps that's it then train once you see as a subject matter expert you need to see each and every image, how they are, and then um, um, uh, whether they any image need to be replaced or renamed. So you need to carefully verify each and every image so that you can be, be before you try, uh, you can ensure that all the images are in proper place and proper way. And click on the try. Once you are ready with all those things, okay with that, then start training. I'm using the cloud hosted. Deploy a model to one of the nodes so that you can utilize them. And here, 
the node hours. How many how many hours in OT you need to have that um, data set to have there? And this takes a lot of time. Close to uh, five to six hours easily takes. So training may take several hours. So you need to wait because he will see the free resources and available resources and then deploy the uh, set data set over there and then start training. And of course, having the uh, pick, up, pick up the right model for you and creating that network. And you have seen that, right? Uh, convolution, max pooling, all those things he will do internally and train this data set and use the results. results. So for that, you need to wait for some time. So anyways, I will be emailed uh, once I get the, um, uh, what do you say, emails like this. Previously, before just before the class, I just canceled my training because it was taking more than more time. So for me, I got a uh, uh, auto email like this. So like that, you will get the uh, intimation once your training is over. So after the training, you need to evaluate, go click on evaluate so that once you click on the evaluate, you can see the confusion matrix um, and then how the accuracy and precision, are there, precision is there for your model. So in this case, what uh, what happened was, this is a previous slide which for the first time when I did, it, when did this. So what happened was, um, type one sky pictures actually few of them are got classified like type one and a few of them got confused to type two but type two all 100 percent are, are are properly identified and type three again identified 100 percent so you have some problem with the type one images so you need to go back and see what images are actually not proper in shape and then replace those images with the right picture so that your model will be well trained well okay um, for that, you can see the confusion matrix over here. After that, you have uh, uh, one more button in that, which is test and use. Uh, there, you can again go to Google Images, download a few images like what we did in a cats and dogs example. Download the different types of skies images. You can just copy the same name and then paste it over there so that you can get the couple of images and then download them and give it to this model. Um, the resizing or normalizing the picture with the help of image generator. We don't need to worry about all those things that um, auto ML will take care and then use the prediction, how close the prediction is. So this is so flexible, but training time is not in your time. Model is not in your, in, in your, in your hand. Um, how, how, how to model it, how to, how to, uh, how many number of layers are there is not in your not in your hand. Everything is auto defined. So for a few problems, yeah, it is quicker and faster without having. Maybe you might have seen a few articles where, without writing a single line of code, you can create a machine learning model. So generally, that's this is how it has been created. For the simpler problems, or uh, simple uh, uh, models, you can actually opt for this kind of training. Um, then you can create a model and then start working and uh, working the model around. So when in-house, when you have less data and not big predictions are required, um, then this is the best option to start with. So with this, Siraj, uh, I'm very uh, uh, far before the timing now. Um, so I one, one more step is there, which is like our, uh, because this training goes, keeps going there. Um, uh, we cannot wait for those many hours. Anyways, I'll be debated with, once the training is over. So this is the difference between uh, a model which is created with coding, same classifier, image classifier, and also without coding, image classifier. So here, the steps are very powerful. Create model with the convolution duty and then max pool, and then uh, give the pictures. With the, with the help of image generator, normalize them, normalize the sizes, and then give them um, so that it trains the epochs in, in the specified number of epochs, use the outcome. In similar way, the same thing is also, again, this is also an image classifier where we have taken the different pictures and then did the same thing in a systematic way. So the training got started. So this is the difference between the two things. 
so you can you can choose two things and also try uh, uh, try a different uh, picture size picture types and see how they are behaving okay um, most of the time with the uh, convolution network we'll go with the creating the proper model and then trying it. and again if you find the deviation again come back and see the data set and change few few images and see what is actually wrong in the present images um because you may have shadows you may have greenery in the background if you see in one of the uh, cats picture you have a lot of greenery over there so probably that's where the model got confused and it has classified as dog so identify those images while giving the try, uh, try to give more kind of that exact kind of images for the training training data set add more them more of that kind so that you are trying your model will also understand okay this this is also a cat even though the background is like this so you have to uh, carefully observe those those pictures those uh, steps carefully so that the performance will increase okay and um, now um, i have created today i have created a small quiz again like yesterday and again uh, this also a uh, couple of uh, uh, like five to six questions are there kindly answer them quickly uh, most of the i think answers i have already discussed um siraj i'm selecting the everyone and then copy pasting it copying and pasted here yes, sir please post in chat box yeah i have done that um already kindly see if everyone yeah. able to access this or not yes sir it is visible sir okay so i'll give uh, uh three minutes of time because six questions are there don't be in hurry uh, uh, in uh, uh, giving the responses just try to go through each and every question once properly and then start answering them because yesterday also uh, i think only 67% is the overall performance i'll give extra minute if required There are two hundred participants and only sixty-three responses.
after answering are you able to see the answer after submitting it participants if you want to give the reply you can post in chat box okay after submitting you are able to see okay nice Two more minutes. that's it yeah now let me give a, a short description about uh, uh, one more service called dialog flow if you would like to create a small chat bot uh, you can actually start with dialog flow um, i have created a very uh, very basic example over here which is a appointment scheduler um, let's see how that works quickly you have intents entities and integrations and fulfillments these are the main terms while creating a uh, any chatbot so try to understand them uh, anyways this uh, example is cre created now the basic idea about this uh, appointment scheduler is um, uh, the, the, there is a background for this as a edu education technology company uh, we are building a, a small chatbot to give it to our customers so that they can before they come to office and all or or virtually also uh, they can set an appointment with uh, one of our one of the mentor group what we have or a broad education consultants what we have and uh, um, uh, the uh, job consultants what we have or counselors career counselors if you if you want to talk to so we would like to uh, invite our customers to set a uh, set a appointment with the with this kind of feature okay with the uh, chatbot okay and later on uh, this after the development is over this chatbot will be integrated into our app and also into our website so in many of the websites if you go there then there will, you can you might have seen a chatbot over there okay either you can type or you can also speak okay with the chatbot so that um, what happens as as i'm deliver, as anyways i'm hosting it on the uh, cloud uh, there uh, my speech api will be enabled and my uh, speech will be translated into text and the text will be given back to your uh, dialog flow agent and appropriate intent will be fired and uh, intent also will look at look, look for the all the uh, entities and also fulfillments are there or not then appropriate answer will be given back to the customer so in, uh, in this kind of uh, chatbot you can also create a similar kind of thing if you have a hospital then if some uh, your patient wants to set an appointment with your a particular doctor then you can create the similar kind of thing so there are many use cases for this kind of appointment scheduler but this is a very basic one um, is still under development 
but I'll show you uh, how these things are actually framed over here. Now, first you need to give the uh, training phrases to your uh, bot. So for that, um, what I have done is see here the yellow color and um, uh, red color over here. I need to see a job consultant at tomorrow first hour. So here, this is a date and time entity. And this is a required a required fulfillment uh, for the what kind of uh, consultant or with whom work, with whom uh, with what kind of consultant you'd like to set the appointment. So user may ask any kind of answers, any kind of uh, uh, user may use any kind of uh, statements like this. Okay. So for that, you just better to go first um, entities. I have one one entity called mentor type, which is a required one. That means I need a appointment with if I, if the user says like this to the chatbot, say I want to see I want to set an appointment. Then it will ask you in return at what uh, with with, with uh, what kind of mentor mentor type. Then I'll say every education consultant. Then it is also a reply back to you at what time and date you need. Okay, I'll say this time and this this date. So this is a flow. This is a conversation flow between the bot and you. So for that, all the required things you need to set it properly. Like here in in this in this before you set the appointment, obviously I need my time and date. Also I need the mentor type, where I need so that I can record these things in my database for this customer. And a automatic email will be generated with the help of cloud function in the background, and that may that mail will be sent to the user. Okay, so this is the overall picture um, uh, flow of the pitch. So again, this data will be saved in my database, maybe in Cloud SQL or uh, somewhere. These fulfillments are used for the uh, making it dynamic. Uh, I, I try to I try to create a calendar for this where all these appointments will be auto saved in my Google Calendar. Okay. And if you would like to test it with uh, Google Assistant, you can test it with that. You can do lot of integrations, not only with Google Assistant. You can do, you can integrate this with your WhatsApp or uh, uh, Snap, uh, telephony, telephony one, or web demo, or Dialogflow, Facebook, Slack, um, Twitter chatbots. You can, you can integrate this with, with anything. Okay. Um, in this case, I am trying to integrate this with my Google Assistant, so that what happens is tomorrow, if my students or my customers have um, uh, Google Home at their home, then they can say, "Okay, Google, uh, talk to." Uh, um, I have named this as a Gold Street app, so talk to Gold Street. Then Gold Street app will be loaded into uh, Google Assistant. Then you can say, "Set an appointment with the so and so person or so and so kind of mentor at a so and so date and time." So this kind of discussion may, may can, can happen with the Google if I integrate this with the. Uh, Google Assistant. So this is the testing environment. Um, let me talk to uh, this this app now, this uh, bot now. Many a times um, uh, when I when I start talking about uh, when I start pronouncing Gold Street, it is giving as a Girl Street. Hopefully this time you should do better. Okay, Google. Um, talk to. Okay, Google, talk to Gold Street. Oh, again, another word. Okay, Google, talk to Gold Street. Gold Street. Here's the test version of Gold Street. Great. Good day. What can I do for you today? I hope you're able to uh, listen this. 
let me show you the flow also data flow so that first time yeah it uh, the pronunciation was not proper again second time it was not proper third time it recognized that and then it is saying here is the test version of gold street good day what can i do for you okay set an appointment what date and time would you like to come in yeah um probably tomorrow at 8 am we have variety of mentors with us whom do you want to talk to choose one from a broad education or job related i would like to uh, meet a broad education consultant you are all set see you then on the 27th of june 2020 t 12 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds plus 6 o'clock the 26th of june 2020 t 20 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds plus 6 o'clock and the 27th of june 2020 t 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds plus 6 okay. o'clock perfect so uh, uh, response i need to uh, reframe it so that i i, I want i want is uh, listen all these things so so that's how you can create uh, you can create your indents so the way we are speaking we we generally we talk in natural language so you need to uh, and imagine that how your customers ask questions so uh, when you are creating those things parameters i just try to uh, give different ways of asking it so need an appointment some people may ask need an appointment or talk to a few people may say uh, talk to a job mentor on so and so day and uh, so this is the, you are bored to understand okay these are different ways that uh, a person can ask ask me questions so it picks up uh, it, it, it the model will be trained over uh, over and uh, over and above this statement of course but basically it will to give the priority for these statements what you are giving okay so it 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 reads all those things and here see um if you see the date and time is a must one and uh, if customer is not mentioning any date and time in his statement even say date and time i can say today or tomorrow or some date also i can give let's say okay google talk to gold street I didn't get that. Can you repeat? Okay, you will talk to Gold Street. Not Gold Street. Say that one more time. <laughs> okay, you will talk to Gold Street. Uh. Sorry, I can't help. Okay, let me pick. Pick up this from there directly. Here's the test version of Gold Street. Hi, how are you doing? What are you looking for? Presently, I can schedule an appointment with a mentor. Would like to proceed? Yeah, this statement I only I mean I only gave there so that you can also customize that. Okay. Um, instead, if you want to say different word, different uh, statement also, or greet your customers, you can do that. Okay. I would like to meet a uh, mentor on eighth June, nine a.m. Actually, it should be July. What type of mentor you are looking for? Either a broad education counselor, job counselor. So I just mentioned mentor, not at what type. So that's the reason he's asking. A job counselor. You are all set. See you then on the twenty sixth of June, twenty twenty. T twenty hours zero minutes and zero so, seconds plus six. So like that, you the can um, for the required answers. Twelve hours zero minutes and zero seconds plus six o'clock. 
like that um, you can uh, mention the required required uh, uh, parameters and give them and what kind of like you can also type this like what kind of date or time you'd like to come in or anyways in what way you, whatever the way you would like to communicate to the customer you can do that so it's a very pretty basic one which i try to show you and when you say mentor type also in the uh, fulfillment uh, in the knowledge and uh, you can mention the same thing isn't very disturbing okay here i i gave uh, three different types of the like what of mentors you are looking either a bio education counselor or job counselor uh, second time if you uh, recall the uh, statement uh, given response given by the board it picked up the second one so like that if you give a number of uh, uh, prompt statements the variety of prompt statements then it picks up one randomly and gives to your customer so you can you can only uh, set those things so that's it um yesterday i tried to show this one um so this is a very basic one then they still under development lot many things to be added um, the data whatever uh, for example bot should know that mr reddy is taking to that and uh, again uh, that session type need to be saved and move to move the back end with the data whatever it giving and the entire chart should be saved on his name um then tomorrow uh, a email confirmation should go so a lot of things are around to be worked on uh, all those things can be done with the help of uh, fulfillments as i told you there we need to write the code and establish this code as a uh, cloud function in uh, uh, google cloud area so that um, uh, uh, immediately the response will be tracked so this, this has some mistake so i need to i'm like rectifying this at this point of time so let me see that's it for today's research um ready to open to take the questions yes thank you very much sir uh, it, it is an excellent session very informative uh, a small change sir first of all we will have vote of thanks then we will go to qa sessions so participants uh, it has been requested to you that first of all we will have vote of session for one or two minutes then in qa session we will post the feedback link please fill that feedback link to get the set no uh, i would like to request the convener of this five day fdp dr gulab singh chauhan for vote of thanks over to you dr chauhan sir chauhan sir is am audible to you chauhan sir chauhan sir is am audible to you you are audible sir uh, please uh, address the meeting hello thanks hello uh, sir you are audible sir please carry on yeah yeah uh, good evening everybody it was a nice session and uh, this is uh, dr gulab singh chauhan uh, convener for this five day uh, package development program on deep dive into emerging technologies like cloud artificial intelligence machine learning and data analysis it was a wonderful session all together it was a good resource uh, knowledge sharing by uh, in our ready sir and uh, i on this occasion i just want to give a word of thanks to all the resources who have given me all the opportunity and platform environment to organize this particular fdp it gives me immense pleasure to thank the general secretary honorable honorable general secretary dr g srinivasri garu the vageshwari college of engineering for providing the environment for the faculty development program on the topic deep dive into emerging technologies like cloud ai ml and data analysis thank you sir i also thank the joint secretary of vageshwari college of engineering mr d srinivas reddy garu who gave his full support on this occasion 
to go on to this FDP. I thank our honorable principal sir, Dr. C. H. Srinivas sir, Srinivas for giving his uh, valuable support and suggestions from time to time to organize such a beautiful session on this uh, uh, topic, uh, which gave a good information. I also thank Professor Jaydev Gyani, who is a professor in the College of uh, Computer and Information Sciences, Majma University, Saudi Arabia. I thank the knowledge partner of uh, Coin Consultants is Private Limited Hyderabad, Mr. Srinath Reddy sir, who was all together with us by sharing his uh, wonderful knowledge on all the topics of the faculty development program for all the four days and uh, wonderful session and wonderful knowledge sir. Srinath Reddy sir, very thank you. And uh, thank you. it was a great time, sir. Yeah, I, thank you so much, sir. I thank uh, my colleague, Mr. Sirajuddin, Associate Professor in Bhageshwari College of Engineering from our department, who was always there uh, throughout the five days to run the show and uh, by coordinating with all the resource people and the participants of the faculty development program. He made the show a great success. Thank you, Siraj. Thank you, sir. Thank I you. thank I thank uh, uh, Sai Kiran sir, assistant professor in computer science, who was there with us uh, at the background, making all the support and uh, providing all the uh, coordination among the participants and the resource people. Thank you, uh, Sai Kiran sir. Also, I thank Srikant sir, uh, who is always there, who was always there but I think in these last two days, he was not able to make it, uh, but he was always there with us. And also I support all the colleagues of my department who supported us directly and indirectly to make this program a great success. I want to thank the, all the participants who made this program a great success by participating in this five day faculty development program, okay, uh, who are from various places, various colleges, and uh, from different part, parts of the globe. Thank you one and all. It was a great time and a great knowledge sharing. And uh, thank you so much. Siraj, thank you. Uh, over to you, over to you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your very encouraging valedictory speech. Thank you very much, sir. Now all the participants, uh, if you have any questions, any queries, uh, you can ask the queries to the resource person are will able to answer it and one more information feedback links are available in chat box click any one of the link and fill the information and you will get the certificate within five to ten minutes remember please click any one of the link don't click more than one link in that case you won't get the certificate feedback form links are available in chat box please Click it. Over to you, Srina, sir. And uh, if you have any queries, you can ask the queries. You can post the questions in chat box. Any questions? Any questions, please raise your hand. Participants having any questions, please raise the hand, then I will unmute you. You can also post the question in chat box. All right, um, it seems no questions here. 